In this video, I'm going to read a story about restaurants and tipping in Colombia. Follow along. Hey, you watching them on right now? You're watching DC Born Rob on YouTube. Make sure to hit like and subscribe. Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is you're located. Thanks for watching. My name is Rob Christian, also known as DC Born Rob, DC Rob. Rob, I answer to them all. Thank you guys for watching. Again, in this video, I'm going to read a story that has to do with restaurant menus, QR codes, pricing tips, and so on for Colombia. And this will give me an opportunity to go over a gripe that I have recently. But again, if you ever get any benefit out of my videos, do me a favor, go down and hit the subscribe button, click the bell to be alerted of any new videos, and like. Like helps the YouTube algorithm. The more you hit like, the more people get to see these videos. So let's just jump into the story here. Okay, this story is in El Colombiano. It's entitled Physical Letters and Voluntary Tips Among the New Rules for Restaurants. The Superintendents of Industry and Commerce updated the instructions on how consumers should be informed about prices. So this has to do with the uh, restaurants not having menus or not having published uh, prices for items on their menu. In other words, market price or per pound and so on. They cannot do that any longer. I wish they could do it here too. This brings up the opportunity for me to bring up my gripe. And that has to do with the QR codes. Just got back from Mexico, what, less than a week ago. And the entire time, every restaurant we went to outside of little taquerias, they had, well, even the taquerias had that QR code on the table where you have to pull out your phone every time and start testing. Uh, let's see. Oh, shoot. What's your Wi-Fi? Oh, you don't have Wi-Fi? Oh, man, my signal is low. So you can't even get them. Can I get a paper menu? Whatever happened with the paper menus? Okay, that's my gripe. And, I, and I'll equate that to this. I did a bunch of trade shows. Well, I had a few visits over the past month. I had three visits, uh, one of which was in L.A., I'm standing at my table. This was a trade show, a small trade show, but I'm standing at my table. Uh, and I, uh, I remember an older gentleman coming up to me asking, hey, you have any brochures for that model right there? And I said, well, actually, I brought the, uh, the uh, sign that had the QR code on it. So you can just simply scan it here and you can download, you know, whatever. And he's, oh, uh, that's OK. And right then it, it uh, came to mind. This is for us older cats who don't feel like being relying on a phone to find out what the price is. It's just annoying. So ever since then, note to self, always have paper and the QR code. It just needs to be both. If you want the QR code and you love the QR code, give me the QR code, but give me my freaking paper menu. By the way, this is the same show I'm standing in. A guy comes up to me going, man, you look just like this YouTuber I watch, man. If it ain't you, you got a twin. That small world. Anyway, let's get to this story because it has to do with menus and pricing and QR codes and yada, yada, yada. By the way, the word for tip in Colombia or anywhere in Hispanic countries is propina. When I first moved to Medellin, I used to wonder, man, what's this propina? What? Are, hey, excuse me, I ordered this, this and that, but I didn't order any propina. And they said, ah, okay, it's tip. Now, there's new requirements on that. You'll see what I mean in a second. Okay, it says the superintendents of industry and commerce pointed out that restaurants, bars, and gastro bars must always guarantee the visibility of the price and that the means of information for customers is physical. So you will have a paper menu now. Okay, it says with fines of up to 2,000 million, the superintendents of industry and commerce will punish establishments that fail to comply with the instructions on how consumers should be informed about prices and do not respect the voluntary nature of the tip. And the most recent update of these guidelines, the SIC stated that consumers must be informed of prices through a list of physical letters, a menu, a paper menu. From the presidency of the Colombian Association of the Gastro Gastronomic Industry, Guillermo Enrique Gomez stressed that the SIC wants to make, make consumers reading of the offer of establishments more precise. Since this is positive when rethinking current regulations, Law 1480, of 2011, the consumer statute that forced businesses to be explicit and clear with customers. With this unnecessary inconvenience, with customers are avoided, emphasized the union leader, who recalled that due to the pandemic, restaurants and gastro bars adopted the digital menu, QR code, which was an emergency alternative to contain the COVID. Since May, the SIC has already reminded these establishments that once the pandemic had been overcome, this exceptional measure could not prevail and that it was pertinent to return to physical price information. Okay, now 
It is not that the QR code is being prohibited. No, no, no. It can continue to be maintained, but the restaurant must have a visible price list so that any consumer before making a decision can see it and be informed in detail, added Gomez. Most of these restaurants, and you'll see most of Latin and Central American that I've seen anyway, they all have a menu out front of the restaurant, either on the wall next to the door or there's a little podium out front, normally next to a hostess or someone standing outside. And it has the prices there. So you can look and go, oh, this has this, this. Do you have any seafood? No seafood. Okay, next. I can keep on going. Excuse me. So keep that in mind. Uh, in this scenario, the SIC noted that uh, the use of technological means is optional and does not replace the obligation to make prices visible. If the price list system is chosen, at least one must be visible to consumers in each a way that they can consult it before entering the establishment, meaning out front, just as I just spoke of. It was stated in the update to the superintendency's instructions. Another aspect that the authority emphasized is that for the display of prices, establishments cannot demand additional requirements from consumers, such as, for example, registering on web pages, providing personal data, or granting access permissions to applications. Nor should text images or elements be used that mislead the consumer about the price of the product, such as, for example, advertisements in tens or hundreds with clarifications such as prices in thousands of Colombian pesos or 20K or inter, uh, indeterminate expressions such as according to size or according to weight or use of the words that do not correspond to the Spanish language. OK, recording the tip. Remember, propina, propina, propina. When you see propina, that means they've added tip. Now, this is going to go over. Do you want seen propina without propina on the check and you just give it on your own? Do you, do you want them to add it automatically? Uh, with that said, uh, I'm going to stop for a second because I can tell you a brief story of being there. When you order something in Colombia, this is my experience. When you order something in Colombia and they bring it to the table, you just bought that. Okay, you're going to have to pay for it. Um, example, uh, Catherine came down to visit me. We went out to eat, nice restaurant, ordered a drink, ah, some specialty drinks. Well, let's try this one. It's got this, 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 and I like those ingredients. So they commenced to make the drink, bring it to the table and, the table, and I taste it, and it is disgusting. So I'm American. The American came out of me, and I said, ah, I don't like this drink. You know, I had one sip out of it. Could I get something else? And they go, oh, you know, the server comes over and goes, oh, what's, what's the problem? What's the problem? Oh, you don't like it? No, no gusto. <laughs> Every Spanish bit of words I came out, no, it's cochino, it's cochino, no pagar. It, it's nasty. I'm not paying for it. So then the bartender comes over. Well, this is how we make it. Okay, that's great, but I don't like it. It's disgusting. It's cochino. No quiero. <laughs> y no pagar. I'm not paying for it. It's nasty. And then the manager comes over. This went on like, I think we went about, went through about five or six different people. And this went over the, the period over a half an hour. We were ready to go. But it was a principle of the thing, being forced to have to pay for something you don't like. Just be aware. When they bring it to your table and you take a sip out of it, that's your drink. Now, I got out of it because I just had to go full force America and go, hey, force me to pay for it. Call the cops because I'm not paying for this. Look, I didn't drink it. And that's how I got out of it. But just be aware of that. If you buy it, if you order it and they bring it to your table, if you order it and they bring it to your table and you taste it, it's yours. Okay. It says the SIC reiterated that in this voluntary acknowledgement that, that the consumer people who are part of the service chain for the good service and product received so the decision on payment depends entirely on the consumer. So it's up to you what you pay. However, it is indicated that the businesses can suggest that the value of the tip, as long as it does not exceed 10% of the value of service provided. So no 15%, no 20%. Don't over tip, guys. I'm telling you, guys and gals, don't over tip because you're going to make it better than the next person. They're thinking this is normal. Oh, 20%? You know, so 10% max. Okay, and that this is according to them. So 10% of the value of the service provided. And the consumer may be asked when he requests a settlement of his account if he wishes to include it in the bill or he wants to pay a different amount. The consumer can decide not to pay the tip, not to pay the tip. You can decide not to pay the tip or modify its amount at any time, even after the sales invoice has been issued, if they were not asked before issuing it to the establishments. Here's a note and here's a quick scam that you need to uh, know about also. We do this in the U.S. So I haven't had employees. We had to let somebody go at a bar that I managed years ago because of this. They will bring you a check 
Okay, you say, okay, add the tip to it. They add the tip to it. The tip is on the check that you receive. You look at the check and everything looks correct and it says, okay, $40. Okay, but that's including the tip. Okay, so now they take it in the back. They swipe the credit card. By the way, every, most every civilized country, they do credit card at the table, but not the U.S. You know, they'll take your card away. They go on the back and they'll swipe it for that $40. So now you have a credit card receipt that says $40 and a space for tip. You have to be aware you've already included a tip and just draw a line through tip. I always personally, I write cash because you can draw a line through and they can write numbers over that line. But if you write out cash, they can't get past that. And then bring the total down, $40. Okay, just remember that you had already paid the tip. Do not get caught up when they add that tip onto your credit card receipt and, and there's still a blank area for a tip. That's another gripe of mine too in the US. Man, they tipping everywhere, everywhere but McDonald's. I'm waiting to go into a McDonald's right now to find out that there's now a tip jar in there. We supposed to tip everybody, the cleaners. I mean, everybody's got a tip jar. What's up? And I'm from the business. I grew up in the restaurant industry. But this tipping stuff has got just got way out of control, way out of control. OK, it says in the case of tips, what was done was to com complement a series of regulations established in the past and that it's important so that the diners are aware of the rights of their rights they have when they come into recognizing a gratuity for those who provide them with service. In this case, the SIC mentions that by means of notices uh, posted at the entrance of the establishment in the letters on the price list, consumers must be informed about the voluntary nature of the tip and its destination, as well as the correlative right that assists them in not paying it or modifying its amount when it's suggested to them. Okay, so keep that in mind. You can tip or no tip or include it or not. Just remember these things, okay? I wanted to get this story because I thought it was interesting and it's not negative. It's very difficult to find some not negative news. Um, if you think I'm only putting out negative news, I search for good news. I ask you guys for good news. And by the way, if you have good stories you want to pass on to, uh, pass those on. Send it to dcbornrobgroup at gmail.com, dcbornrobgroup at gmail.com. Also, if you're going down and you want to join our private group, dcbornrobgroup at gmail.com, send me your name and your WhatsApp number. Be reminded, we're not on WhatsApp. I solely use your WhatsApp number as a reference, okay? And I forgot how many we have, six, 700 people right now. So join the group, especially if you're going to go. When you get there, change in the app. Change your location to Columbia, and you'll see who's near. You just had a request earlier. Hey, I'm going there in a couple of weeks. Uh, how can I hook up with some people? First of all, get by Sweet Georgia Cafe. Like I said, get you some good food. And when you miss, uh, I'm sorry, don't get mad at me, but I'm not a fan of Colombian food. I'm just not. I love Colombia. I love the people. I love the area. I love the tropical nature of it. But I don't like the food. I'm sorry. So when I want some good food, I go to Sweet Georgia Cafe. When I want a good drink, I bring my own. <laughs> I bring my own. But still, you can get anything you want pretty much at Sweet Georgia Cafe. But when I get the duty free, I'm picking up a, bo a, bo a bottle of Ciroc. And I'll head over to Sweet Georgia after that. Maybe buy a couple there, but I'm already right by the time I get there. Anyway, these are things to keep in mind when traveling to Columbia. If you have any good news that's worth sharing, in other words, uh, something that people are going to have interest in watching, let me know. Thank you guys for watching. Be safe. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you go down and hit subscribe. You definitely like it. It helps that YouTube algorithm. You know what I'm talking about? See what I'm saying? We have a YouTube channel. Like it. Please comment and share if you like the video. Please subscribe and kick the bell.